One of the things that is taboo in the church is the topic of money and giving. But I know it's a subject that is thought about frequently and asked about occasionally. For me, growing up in the church, I always heard the word tithe. Every time the offering plates were passed, we were expected to give our tithes or a tenth of our income. So if I made $100 that week, I made sure that I wrote a check for exactly 10 bucks. Not a penny more, not a penny less. I'd walk away and I'd feel that I fulfilled my godly duty. In the Old Testament, God ruled over Israel and there were certain tithes that the Jews were required to pay. These tithes would go towards the priests and the Levites, who were the religious leaders in that time. But if you study further, you'll see that there were other tithes that they were required to pay as well. It was essentially a government tax. At the end of the day, they were giving somewhere between 23 28%, not just the 10. This includes livestock, crops, and other resources as well. The question we have is, then why do we give and how much should we give? I think 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 teaches on a great example of this in the topic of giving. 2 Corinthians 8, Paul uses an example of some churches in Macedonia and their heart behind the giving purpose. 2 Corinthians 8 uh, verses 2 and 3 says this, For in severe tests of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, beyond their means and of their own accord. There's three things that we see here. Number one, they gave according to their means. That means I don't give the same as my neighbor. I have different things than my neighbor does. Beyond their means means that they gave sacrificially and they gave generously. And on their own accord means that this wasn't an obligation. They did it out of their heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it continues to teach and it says, The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Giving little, you receive little. Giving much, you'll be blessed with much. Maybe that's financially, maybe it's not. But God does bless those that give. Give because you want to give and you want to see God do a work in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 gives this idea. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The question is, what are you investing in? Are we laboring our whole lives to accumulate a bunch of stuff that the Bible says will eventually be destroyed? Or are we investing in things that matter eternally? Eternal matters and, and our money is an indicator of that. James 1 says that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. So knowing this, that, we have, um, that everything we have is not ours, we are simply stewards of all that God has allowed us to borrow. Last principle, and we'll, we'll summarize. Proverbs 3 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and your first fruits. This is a practical way to say that I'm putting God first. Instead of paying bills, buying toys, then we give a few bucks in the offering plate what is left over. So, what should our giving look like? I do think that tithe can be a guideline of where to begin, but we certainly don't want to give exactly 10% because we feel obligated. What's the reason behind your giving? If Christ has transformed your life, then we will have a desire to see our efforts go towards things that, eter that matter for eternity. We have the ability to worship Him with our giving. Does our giving look anything like the example in 2 Corinthians? Many times, we as believers say that we want to see God do a work, yet we aren't willing to contribute to that financially. Oftentimes, we plan, we prepare, we budget for an upcoming season or a year, vacations, additions to the home, repairs, etc. Sometimes we have to sacrifice for those things. Have we ever thought and prayed about what we ought to give? Do you want to be used by God and allow his, the stuff that he's given us to benefit for his kingdom? Ask the Lord and decide in your own hearts how much you should give. The other question that we want to decide is, what are we giving to? The local church, if, if you're a part of a local church, you are there, you believe in the preaching, you believe in the teaching, you believe in what the body is doing. And what you'd want to do is give towards that local church so that those efforts may be going towards things of, of eternity and the things that matter. 
other things that we can give. We can give to uh, friends that are in need. We can give to people in the church that are hurting, that need, that need help. We can give to missionaries. We don't want to sit here and tell you what to give, how much to give. The Bible teaches that we give because we want to worship God we worship God with the first fruits of, of what we have been given, and that we are stewards of everything that God has given. And I want to honor Him with that. Take time this week, read through 2 Corinthians chapter 8, chapter 9. Sit with your family. If you make budget plans, if you're looking for, for different things that you're looking for for the future, ask God, how much, how much should I give? Is giving a part of what I do with what I have been given?